Okay, we are back for this week of the hit human investment technology, a session where Sam Rash slash Rich and and myself Andrea come to you to share our hearts, our minds, everything that is about personal development and really owning who we are. Because uh, the quote that keeps floating around for me is, "When we know who we are, we know who we're not." And so we can continue to let go of all those stories or all of that programming that kind of takes us down some uh, garden paths and not to where we really want to be with our heart, mind, body and soul. So last week we delved into this topic, guys, of why is it so hard to love myself? And so we're doing a bit of a part two here because the magical man or superman, Rash, had to head off. He did not get to to spend the whole session with us. So we're going to we're going to go back there and delve into it a little bit more and I really wanted to be able to come back and hold some space around Lana's questions. So before we go much further, so hello to Gina who's tuned in for us, but before we go much further, let's all have a moment of just not introducing ourselves because we know who we are, but how's things Sam? It's great. Thanks, Andrea. I love the intro. Things are going great. Hey, Rash. Hello, Anne, and joining us as well. It's really great to see everyone this week, and I'm so happy that we're talking about a part two um, because it's such a lovely topic, and we could talk for a while on this on this subject. And um, like we always do, really, I mean, we're not a bunch of doctors here, or psychiatrists or anything, so quick disclaimer, we're just a bunch of great coaches and we know a thing or two about the self-development world that we'd like to share with everyone. Um, and by doing so, we encourage people to interact um, with us in this conversation because we, we really view this as a, like a coffee shop. You know what I mean? Like we're having a coffee, maybe you're having a tea, whatever it is, or maybe you're having something else, who knows? <laughs> but um, we're, we're all kind of like, you know, talking about self-development at the core and we've extended this episode, I think it's episode number 13, is it, guys? Yeah, this is 13, yeah. This is number 13. So we're 13 episodes in. I mean, I'm absolutely stoked. I mean, this is amazing. Like, it first started off as, like, one or two episodes. I was like, hey, where's this going to go, right? And so we're really happy that people are engaging. We're talking about this. Today's topic, why is it so hard to love myself? Part two. So, Rash, jumping over for you. How's it going? What's going on? I'm great, man. Just um, sending some links into the groups of Facebook uh, to get people on, um, doing the usual thing. No, it's good. Last week I missed it. Uh, and I sort of like said, please, please do it for an extended week because I think it's a great topic. And um, I had to go past the passport office. And so I was only there for 10 minutes. But the week's been great. Uh, the weather is awesome in, in Dubai. At the moment it's like 30 degrees every day, so which is great. And that's it, man. Right on. And you join us. And you joined us Thank on the get show. You no, joined I pushed us. myself back in again, guys. Hello. It's lovely to be here with you all. Um, yeah. And and really itching to to get into the subject because it's it's a humongous topic. And um, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can clarify. So maybe I'm, I'm sure that Andrew will probably even ask. If, if we can invite people to be a little, even more, um, just like Lana has been, you know, and ac actually asking questions, that will make the discussion even richer still. So um, I'm not sure, Just I'm just inviting people to be even more, um, exchange more with us and let's let's take it even deeper. But lovely to be here, guys. Thank you once again. That's awesome. Um, Andrea, we're going to jump to you very, very shortly um, because, you know, you're, you're steering this as well. And there was a question that Lana had posted. Hello, Lana. Hi, Moritz. Hi, Gina. Hi, everyone that's joining. Um, so we remembered that question, and we want to pop that up. And uh, I believe Andrea wants to uh, touch on that point as well. Yeah. And just before we do, hey, uh, is it Lana or Lana? I'm not sure how you're going to tell me which one it is, but I'm hoping I'm saying it right if I'm saying Lana. But... Before we do, I really, I, I really want to, Sam, you made such a good point when we jumped off last week. We did a little, you know, we <clears throat> tend to do a little debrief and it's really stuck with me for the week in terms of 
he said, I want it to be fun. I want more fun in what we do. And and I really thought about that because sometimes when we're talking about these topics, like energy is a really strong thing. And sometimes when we're kind of diving deep, it can feel like it's a little heavy and a, you know, a little, little like we're we're treading through the mud and stuff. And yet I really want to invite people, and it's something I need to remember myself too, that it doesn't have to be like that. We can have a real light approach about these investigations and these contemplations and this inquiry, like this self-inquiry journey. It doesn't have to be like, oh, why do I do that? Or, oh, this happened to me. or And just be in the dread of it so much. We can actually be like, yeah, right, that's interesting that that's, come up again oh that's interesting that that keeps happening I wonder why that is and be quite curious about it so I just wanted to preface with that for a start um I'm I'm, gonna... okay sorry I'm just I'm just yeah I've got it right Sam's pronunciation yep okay cool so it's your little Canadian accent over there Sam yeah. <laughs> so first of all before I even go in here I do I do actually want to ask Lana I want to ask her permission because I think it's really super important to get permission for me to kind of go a little bit into the question she posed last week. So, Lana, if you can, I'm hoping you'll give me a thumbs up, otherwise you probably wouldn't have turned up. You, you keep turning up, so I'm assuming that you're interested in the journey we are here to take with you. Okay. All right. So, mm -hmm. Lana, felt, okay, so we can, maybe, we can maybe wander down into that as well. But the question last week, Lana, if you're okay with it, was, how can I stand up for myself with certain people that I'm not scared of but others I can't go there? So I'm assuming that there's, there's situations where you can't speak your truth. Uh, you're not necessarily afraid of them. So what I would have really loved to have done last week is, is really pose that back to you. Like why do you think that you can't stand up for them, like stand up? Like what comes up when you contemplate a situation maybe that you've had where you get those feelings and what would it mean if you did stand up? So it's always being able to come back and ask yourself because each one of us could have a completely different interpretation, Lana, of why we think that this happens to you and yet it's only going to be our own interpretation. So mm -hmm. it's literally being able to sit with that. Why do I think I can't? What comes up? What do I hear? What do I feel at, at, the, at the thought of standing up for myself, speaking my truth, saying yes or saying no or, or changing my mind or whatever, whatever the situation might be? Because that's where the real self-investigation gets to come from. Because we, I believe we do have our own answers and we don't necessarily have to get those outside of us. We can have people with us to guide us on that exploration. But the, the truth for you will be in there. Okay, so probably the fear of being shut down and feeling in trouble. So this is where I would, again, what does it mean to, what would it mean to be in trouble? What would it mean about you, Lana? if you've got in trouble. And so again, it's just this lightness. It doesn't have to be heavy or holy shit. How do I work this out? Like, oh, okay. If I get shut down and I'm in trouble, hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what that would mean. And continue to just be curious to see where it goes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And Isn't so that nice? we, yeah, and so See how these answers are coming, Lana. See how you, uh, I, might be, I might be guiding the questions for you to ask, but you have the answer. So being wrong again. And what would it mean if you were wrong? Again. And what comes up? What do you hear? What do you feel? Hey, Rocco, Stardust. I think we call yeah, Mr. Stardust. Stardust. Superstar from the Jumper Punch. Yeah. <laughs> and so the lightness of this, like it can feel like maybe it's 
it gets heavy or whatnot, but we can have the lightness of contemplation and the excitement of, of getting our own answers. Yeah, and so there's some unsureness there, Lana, and that's okay. It's just that continuing mm. to come back to, mm. Mm. okay, someone's got a louder voice than me. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that my voice is not as important? Does it mean that I'm not entitled to have a voice? Like just gently kind of, you know, investigating what, what these meanings we make about the situations and experiences in our life because from my experience it's not what happens it's what we make it mean about who we are that is kind of our thing that we need to to work through what does it mean about lana if her voice isn't as loud as somebody else's anybody else i'm um, Anybody yeah. else feel free to jump in with me. No, I'm just you... seeing the comment here. Is it just to switch it up a little bit? He's going, Richard is saying, is that a slurpee you're drinking? And it's, it's actually, it's a fake, but. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So that was an interesting comment from, from uh, Lana. Lana, I hope that you got, okay, so it's a good point, but some people can somehow have the upper hand and you kind of have to go along. Yeah. It is a <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, I, and, and I'm going to pose this Lana. Is that ultimately true? Exactly. Is it ultimately true that you have to go along? I'm not saying it's easy or hard or whatever. I'm not saying about the difficulty of that. But is it ultimately true that you have to? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Lana. <laughs> but this is where we get to. And this is what's exciting. As much as it may not feel exciting, I'm going to promise you that it gets to an exciting point because when you recognise that you don't or that it's not true, that's your ultimate power coming back. That's when you can shift and change a situation regardless of what it is and that is where you get to change up your life. Correct. That's exciting, I think. Isn't Lana a lucky person? She's got four people working with her today and the show is dedicated at the moment the well, yeah. first part of the show for her but do you <clears> realize <throat> lana we're all we we have all been lana there's not one of us in in this entire exchange that hasn't had this experience that's why we're smiling and saying yeah because we've all been there lana and funnily enough most of us don't stop to realize and we think we're the odd ones out none of us are odd ones out we've all been there it's just that in our case we've had a chance to be reflective just like andrea's talking um to make it to make it you know to make sense of it so that we can somehow um deal with it um so yeah back back to andrea that, that's just a comment i wanted to make well and it ultimately really plays into what the title is because yeah. that is how we love ourselves is by admitting that this is not ultimately true and I get to make a different choice. I get to believe something different. I get to act, some, you know, make a different decision. And we're not here to say that it's always easy. It's not. It's really not to, to, to get yourself out of, like, maybe thoughts or actions or, or patterns, habitual patterns. It's not. But I tell you what, it's gosh dang rewarding when you work out that you can. So. Can I? Yeah. Can I? Jump in here, Andrea. Is that a possibility? Or are you ready to take it to the next step? Say that again, sorry. Are you ready to take it to the next step? Because it's a matter of now us helping her work out how do you, how do you deal with it and before it becomes too overwhelming and you run away. It depends on what, what it is you're, well, you're I'm, dealing with. Uh, right. Yeah, I, I'm going to suggest that once, I think the 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 line of the, for me, let me let me put, put a personal perspective here. For me, when I get into situations where I stop myself and I realize, oh my gosh, I'm in an environment where I feel, for whatever reason, this person has almost um, has almost st stopped me in my tracks, and I can't I can't be who I am. What I then what I then suggest is I've I've got to get out of my emotions. And be like a fly on the wall and look at what's happening 
and relook at the whole thing if you can without emotion. I know that sounds impossible, but that's the way. So you then, because when you can pull your emotional state out, you can see where the dynamics lie and how you're literally giving your power away and letting them suck it back. And when you can see, oh, my gosh, this guy's, this person is playing me and I'm letting them because I just feel as if I'm the weaker entity here. And when you can do that, you can say, oh, I don't have to be the weaker entity. Why should I be the weaker entity? And then when that fear, because what, what that we're talking about is a fear. So once you can see the fear and you can grab hold of it, you can make sense of it and you can sort of shelve it that's when you give yourself permission to let love take its place because when there is no fear, that's where love can automatically come in. So what I would recommend is it's, it's, it's about finding, the, finding the, um, the courage and, the, and to slow ourselves down enough to look at what's really happening and to realise, as Randria said, this is just our choice in how we're reading the situation and maybe saying, I don't have to read it that way. There are many other ways that I can read it. What's really happening and how do I take control? Sorry, Andrea. Yeah. No, don't apologise. That's fantastic. Interesting. Interesting. So just hey, gotta... Yeah, there's a really there's a really big uh, there's a... comment here. So, Lana, yeah. I, I hope that was helpful, Lana, and, and for others as well. Um, a lot of uh, deep insights over there, something to work on. And you mentioned something that I gathered is a, a dissociation. <clears throat> we have a state where we can dissociate from a situation and we have that power all human beings have that power we can dissociate from a situation what i mean by dissociate meaning step back okay and take some sort of breathing room usually when people have major issues according to anything they usually reference it where it's close to them it's like in front of them my issue is so big it's right here so if you actually push that away slowly okay you create a little bit of distance which will create a little bit more breathing room, a little bit more time for you to process the information. So that's another just quick kind of technique, whatever it is that you're feeling right now, whatever it is, usually it's pretty close. It's a close proximity to your body, okay? And if you could slowly, gently move that away or tuck it anywhere you like, but away from you for the time being, then you'll find you've got a little bit more perspective on that situation. So you're creating a little bit of a space there. So I found that... Very, very interesting. I see Dan is actually yeah. posing a very big question as well. I think the biggest obstacle for the majority is loving yourself is considered ego. People misinterpret confidence in ego. For me, you can never love anyone properly. If you don't love yourself, it's like giving it to the homeless and posting about it. Love without self-love is protection over heart. Give with your heart, not your ego. Oh, wow. That's a great, great That's topic. very wise words from the POM man, Dan Williams. I was going to put it on. And the carton community has come out strong, yeah. uh, Dan, which is can good. I, oh, sorry. Can I just respond to what you were saying, there, Sam, in yeah. terms of the distance? So yeah. my perspective around that is that that distance that we need to create is distancing our experiences from our identity. Our identity is who we are at the very core in terms of the divine being that we were created to be from the minute that we were born, from the minute we were conceived maybe. But there's the, like nothing had tarnished us then. Nothing had given us this perception that we weren't enough or we weren't worthy. We were magnificent as we came here. That is the truth of our identity, what we do. So, you know, we can, we can attach these labels to our identity. So, you know, the high-paying job or the, 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 you know, gorgeous wife on, the, on, on our arm or the, the magnificent car or what society has told us is fair and reasonable, that becomes, can sometimes become our identity. The things that happen to us, whether they're good or they're bad, become our identity. Well, I'm this person because this happened to me. I am this because I achieved that. And the distance that we really need to be able to create so that we can really address these things and, and put it in its place of accepting that that is, but it's not who I am, is by recognising that that's not what makes us who we are. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Yeah, that, that makes sense. around and makes sense? sense? 
No, it does. You know? it does. Like, and so this is the thing, like what Dan's saying there, is that, you know, when you actually fully embrace who you are and you know at the, at the depth of your heart and soul who you are and what you're about, you will be able to feed the homeless and not put it up because you don't need any approval or, or validation out there. And it's yeah. okay to it's okay to want it. I've said this before. It's okay to want people to like us and to be accepted and and to think that we are a great person. But when we need it, as in we're not enough without it, well then we're on a slippery slope of it impacting our identity. Yeah, I, I wanted to jump on that very quickly, Andrea. I think that's perfect. <laughs> Dan's point, you're right. I mean, that's what it is. That that's the word on the street. You know, when like loving yourself seen as loving yourself is it, maybe egoistic it, you know like it, this guy's full of himself selfish selfish all that mm. kind of stuff but the question really is how much time or how much of an investment do you spend alone like that's ultimately the question how much time do you spend alone like are we in are you in the habit of spending time alone because spending time alone is i tell you the biggest return on investment ever. If you could spend time learning how to spend time on your, on, on your own. Because when you do, you'll find that you have all that power you need. You have everything that you need. Everything is there. And creating a habit of spending more time alone. And so I just want to touch on that because the, the moment you understand who and how much power you really have, things get crazy good. Like it's really good. You you don't really seek that acceptance as much as as you did earlier from people. And I notice um, uh, Maurice said getting acknowledgement and acceptance from like a father, a parent, an authority figure. You're right. But I think ultimately the conversations that we should be having more of is how much how much time am I giving myself? How much self love am I giving myself? How much am I being able to understand who I am? Okay, what my, what my needs are, what my desires are, where am I going with this? Um, and really inquiring as opposed to just um, going out of reaction with where, how the world is just going. Everything, there's so many tests out there. There's, we're getting challenged left, right, and center. And so, yeah, go ahead, Anne. <laughs> Sorry, I was just going to jump in there. I'm going to mention that horrible word, um, COVID. Um, this has been, COVID's actually been the one thing that's clarified to everyone how difficult it is for us to stay in our own skin for long enough. We've been sort of, you know, we've been sort of shut down for so, locked down for so long. But the scary thing is that we've forgotten how to stay with ourselves. We've forgotten how to just be comfortable in being who we are. And COVID has brought that to our attention. So take that one step further to realise that as children, as we said before, it's been mentioned, that we were so comfortable in our own skin. Nothing was wrong. Everything was perfect. And now we've got to a state where we're waiting for someone else to say, yep, that's okay, and yep, you've ticked that box, and that's the way we live our entire life, waiting for someone else to give us permission. So I think... Um, or validation. Yeah. Yeah. I think it was... Um, who was it? Maritza. I think Maritza talked about father. It, it's, and, it's, and it starts with mum and dad. Have I got mum's attention? Have I got dad's attention? And what do I have to do to get their attention? And, gee, if the other kids are getting, you know, if my brother and sister are getting more attention than I, why aren't I and I should be better? And so that's where the shifts start to happen with everything. That's what I'm talking about, the power imbalance. So when you stop to realise, my God, I've forgotten about who or how I am, and that's about, and we've now termed that as being selfish, again, call it conditioning, call it starting from religion or whatever it is, um, and so we've lost that communication with ourselves. We're fearful of even hearing or what we think. We don't even know what we think anymore. So until we can do that, until we can accept ourselves, there is no opportunity for love of self. And that's why I'm saying I think we have, and as, been, as, as the comments clearly state, we realise that we're not, we don't really fully give ourselves permission to love ourselves because we're, it's deemed selfish. Um, and we've got to prove our worth before we can get anything. But it's anything, everyone, according to everybody outside us, not from us. So we've literally changed our entire life to be someone totally different. So, and I, I just need to stress, you know, um, you know, Sam's perfect, perfectly right. We do need to spend more time of ourselves, but I want all of us to realise how hard that is. 
It is really, really a difficult thing to do because we have literally told ourselves we no longer have permission to do that. And that's but who's scary. told us who's told us that? Everyone, society. Because you, if you if you don't, you know, if you're a kid in school and if you don't get the answer right, you're deemed bad. But if you turn around and say, Oh my god, I had this great story because I had this imagine, you know, this imaginary animal just come out, and they'll say, Be quiet, we're talking about maths. So so with that, you, your, your opportunity to be who you are gets curtailed, gets squashed and squashed and squashed to the point where we realise the only way that we get attention is by uh, affirming somebody else's expectations. True, true, true. Okay. Hey, there's That's a lot a of comments here. Sorry, Sam, just a quick thing. There's a lot of comments here. Big hello to Joe from Bangkok. And he's put a couple of comments here. He says, hello, <coughs> DJ Rash, which is uh, he just found out that I'm a DJ. Uh, but, uh, uh, there's a lot of comments. Can we go through some of the comments, Sam? Yeah, also? yeah, very important. Yeah, but be before we do, I noticed Dan's comments are quite lengthy. I, I wouldn't mind inviting him on if he'd like to share. Yeah, let's you. let's get Dan on. I'll, Dan, I'll send him the link. Yeah, Dan, if, you, if you'd like to jump on, because I noticed that this is a topic I'm sure dear to your heart as well. Um, so we refer to him as the Palm. He's the Palm Man. Palm Man. Okay. And um, Joseph's comment, really, you're right. I mean, there's a lot of like, you know, we're not going to get into obviously the religion and stuff like that, but there are a lot of groups out there that teach you to love other people. Yeah, it's very noble. Of course it is. But how can you give love from an empty cup when you're not loving yourself? So uh, I think I think we should have more conversations around that because let, let's face it, when you're good, people around you are good. Okay. And if you feel shitty, then people around you are going to feel shitty. <laughs> It's just some simple as that, you know, it's cause and effect. And um, and I just wanted to, Lana, did, did, was that a good reply you got from Andrea? Were you happy with that? I just want to get a, a, a thumbs up from Lana as well, because we, we dedicated the first part of this show. Um, hey, we've got Dan in. So let me just, uh, can we add Dan in just quickly yeah, to the stream? Yeah, just one sec, Rich. The other thing is, I noticed things got just a tiny bit heavy, We're just changing gears, get a little bit fun here. So we want to switch gears. Yes, Sam, Lana, awesome. That's great. That's what we want to hear. That's awesome. And thank you, Andrea, for sharing that. Um, I'm going to jump this over very quickly before the palm man comes on. And what's your view on, like, what do you, what would you, what would you say the first step is to, to get this process started with someone? I think, I think to love themselves well, I think it's very important for us to realize that we've stopped loving ourselves I mean it, it's I mean I know it sounds simple and easy but do we ever stop and think my gosh you know I'm I'm here living my life for everybody else but I've never ever really stopped to consider what is it that I you know I am and I want I mean that's what concept of loving yourself is and giving yourself permission just think and be that's the I think that's the very first step and I think most of us have forgotten that um, do you guys agree I love the way you said think and be. That's yeah. a, a great one. Think and be. That's a good one. I'm going to write that one down. Uh, the but palm man. Let, let me get the out. palm man in. Let's yeah, get he's... the palm man in. Hello, uh, Mr. Palm does... Man. <laughs> Hello, how are we all doing? Are we okay? I you love doing? what you got in the background, my, my, <laughs> I, was my waiting, man. Listen, I was waiting for that. Just representing the greatest Graphic. team, the greatest team Australia's ever created. Carlton Football I'll, Club, welcome. I'll, I'm just comment. representing the perfection of humanity, which is Charlie Kerner. <laughs> <laughs> what? Nice one. Dan, how are you, brother? Oh, I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Awesome, man. Good stuff. Good to have you on. I noticed that some of your questions were quite deep and lengthy and amazing questions, to be honest. So could you shed a little bit more light on that, like where you're coming from with, with, with those views? Well, I mean, I, I always think that it's a bit like teaching someone love. It, it You can't ever teach something unless you know how to do it yourself. So mm -hmm. that's the first start. You can know theory, but you can never pass on knowledge unless you can do. Um, so the where I come from with love is I think that every obstacle human beings have is usually exteriorly given. So... Let's just say, for argument's sake, I'm too fat or too ugly for this person to love me. That's been given to them by themselves. They won't have developed that thought because you look at a baby, 
and I've got kids, they don't know where they fit into society. Society teaches them that. So I think what you guys have covered is spot on. You've got to find time to realize that it's not bad to love yourself. And people say they love other people, but I find it very hard that you could ever love anyone if you can't love yourself. And what I mean by that is you could still love someone, but I don't think you can give 110%. I think your love you're giving someone else isn't coming from the right place. It's coming from a, a projection of your insecurities where true love for me is blind. That whole saying, love is blind. You don't think about yourself when you love someone. You think about them. But you should think about yourself in that same light. Like I hear it at work all the time with sales staff. This guy's an arrogant arsehole. But that's because he turns up in the morning. He knows he's going to bash out 10 sales, 12 sales. That's not arrogance. That's an acceptance of who he is. He's very good at what he does. And that is the gray area society teaches us. Putting our hand up and saying, I'm perfect. You should think you're perfect because you are the most perfect version of you. No one can copy you. But I think, can I just answer to that? That's, that's actually absolutely perfect, Dan. But the, the issue is somewhere, somewhere down the line, someone has said something that you've picked up. So someone has said, you're out of this click. You're not quite up to standard. You're whatever it is. And if if we register, if the individual registers that and makes that a truth for themselves, that's when they claim it and own it. And so that's why they then have a low self, what, whatever low self-esteem on whatever, whatever factor it is, whether that, you know, appearance or ability or whatever it is. What I'm trying to say here is we, as individuals, we hear someone say something that's judgmental of us it may not be intended that way, but that's what we hear it, and then that's what we believe, and that's that insecurity starts to start the, the ball rolling. I've got to be better. I don't have this. I don't have that. So the self esteem and love of self slowly, slowly dismantles away. Whereas the egotistical person, I would say, believe it or not, if you're brought brought up in a family where you're actually invited and encouraged and supported and really loved then there's enough thick skin to, to, to project any negativity. So we have to realise that our foundations are incredibly important. And if we don't have those foundations, they start to break down within us and then that, that takes on to the next step. Well, that, I mean, I would say is that person, though, that's belittling the person or saying them things, is that person air? Is that person food? Is that person water? So I have a simplistic review. If they're not air, they're not water, they're not food, they're no good to me. They're, I, they're not essential. They are the three essentials of life. So opinions are like that. If they're not air, they're not water, they're not food, they're not needed. They're, they're not something I need to hang on to. It's a bit like this cup of water. I could hold this cup of water all day. How much does it weigh? Not much. But if I kept holding it for 24 hours, eventually my body is numb because it weighs so incredibly much. So it's about how long I hold on to this water. If I hold on to it for that long, I'm never going to notice the weight of it. But if I held it in my hand for 24 hours, so it's about learning to let go. And I know that's hard and it's really easy for me to say that. Years ago, I used to hold on to things, but I just realized that genuinely people will have opinions of you and you validate them if they care about you. But genuinely, a lot of opinions you get on a 24 hour through seven days a week they're not opinions that you need to keep. They, they really aren't. And you can, the way to fix that, how do you fix that? In my job, I tell people something very simple, and that is lie. Lie to yourself. People say lying's bad. Lying's brilliant. Lie to yourself. In, pr start pretending oh. you are confident. Oh, start boy. pretending you love yourself. Oh, because that's the first stage. It's a habit. So in the morning when you wake up and you think I'm a failure, that's habitual. You never used to do that. Something made you start. So we start cheating and we lie to ourselves. And everyone has one good quality. It's amazing in development working with people. I have the most unconfident people. But eventually, if I press them hard enough, they give me one quality. I remember a great story who was very unconfident. Someone said her biggest quality was she could find shortcuts it, to work. You know, when she's driving and she goes somewhere, she rememorizes shortcuts. And she says, that's probably my best quality. My husband says, that's my best quality. I remember areas. And it's focusing on that. That's There's one validation you've had. So it might sound stupid, but focus on that. You're good at that. Why are you good at that? Okay, what else are you good at? And it eventually, 
we lock it away, I think. Our brain's clever. We lock away the positivity. But once you open it up, you'll be shocked at how many things you are good at. It's crazy. But may I jump in there, though, Dan? Because I think I think it's a bit we have to be careful about fooling ourselves. So for me, you know, all of this affirmation talk, I mean, I, I find it a little bit we have to be very careful because we know when we're fooling ourselves. So I'd be more inclined to say, get to the truth of it, you know, um, and, and, and focus, as you rightly say, when you get a positive, you own it and, and live off it, you know, breathe it in and keep it there and use it as, as a foundation to keep adding more to it. But by lying about it and making it happen or believing that it might be the case, it doesn't work. So, for instance, um, I think it was um, Moritz actually talked about father. If your father is not giving you attention and you're feeling depleted, you can't just imagine that dad loves me because he doesn't. But you have to realise that, you know, maybe it's maybe it's not quite what I'm thinking. Maybe it's my perception of it. That's a different story. But I think it's important that we, this concept of truth, real truth, has to be foremost on everything. No more, you know, you can't, I mean, it's like for me, I mean, this is me. But, you know, people lying lying in a, a bath with, you know, um, with uh, candles and, and all the rest of it, for me, it doesn't give me, it, it's not real. But if I turn around and realise, oh, my gosh, I've misunderstood what that person had said, it comes from me feeling bad rather than them telling me that I'm bad. And so then I can then, that's a positive. So, yeah, sorry, Andrea, go ahead. Can I just jump in? And, and I think this is, this is so important and it's so good to see, like, obviously, how how Dan has done it and what's worked for him and, and what you've done and what's worked for you and I have a different take. This is the reality is that we are all very, very individual human beings and what love is to me and how I love me and what I need to do to be able to own my place in this world might seem like absolute rubbish to you, Anne, and that's okay because this is not your journey, it's mine. And being so mm. what is it like what is it that we individually need to do to recognize the magnificence that is within us now for me i will absolutely take people into that quiet moment and it might feel a bit deep for sam and stuff like that but i believe the truth is in our heart and our soul and i believe when we know how to shut the rest of the world out and sometimes people can do that on their own and other people might need the guidance a bit like i you know ask questions for lana in underneath dad not loving us mum being a, a cow our friends dumping us our partner cheating on us us losing our job or every other external thing underneath everything is the truth of who we are and whatever takes you to that as long as it takes you to a feel good feeling because i believe that's what truth is then it doesn't matter how you get there but it's really important that if you want to have a different experience in life, that you work out how you do. But that's really it's sensitive. It's sensitive, like, isn't it? I mean, it's yeah, sensitive. Right. But I'm going to say, it. I'm going to, I'm not someone that really calls it hard. I, I prefer to be a soft person. But we get to the point today. Now, what you bought, what brought you to your point in life, Rash or <coughs> Sam or Anne or Dan or me? They're all different. Mm -hmm. Whether you're abandoned, whether you're a widow, whether you were cheated on, it doesn't matter. Whatever has brought you to this point today. Jeez, I've got some energy in me. Sorry about that. That's good. Bring it yes. on, baby. It's important <laughs> to know. I know that. It's super important to know. I'm not dismissing that. But to get to where you want to go tomorrow, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to accept that they were your experiences that brought you here to today. And you get to choose what you do with that to take you to where you want to go tomorrow. End of story. We cannot undo that. I can't bring my husband back. I can't do that. I had to work out what I wanted for my future and work out how to get there. And I have a freaking amazing life because I chose to not allow that to infiltrate my identity for the rest of my life did it for a period of time yes that's called grieving that's called being human but we can change what we think of ourselves at any given moment if we want to and it's okay if you don't want to it's okay 
you're not failing, you're not wrong. Maybe it's just not the right time. But when you feel it, you'll know. Sorry. That's good. Listen, we've got a lot of comments. We've got a lot of comments. I love this. Seriously. We, we uh, Rich, can I can I jump in just sorry, I want to hear that. from the pom man too. Yeah, go ahead. Of course, of course. I think I think uh, Dan actually touched on something really cool too. And there's a bunch of comments there. Okay. We're 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 having some some good times with this, good fun. I think uh, great points as well. Um, I actually take on a couple of points that Dan mentioned as well. I, I prefer to use the word pretending because it's a little bit more malleable, a bit more playful as opposed to you know lying to yourself. But I absolutely understand. I follow, <laughs> I follow what you say, uh, Dan. I, I do follow that that strategy, and it has worked actually quite a quite a few times. And there's a lot of science to back that up in terms of first starting to pretend a certain behavior and then carrying it through. However, it does require obviously some more, you know, background and context as to how to set that up. But I think it's really cool. I think we touched on a great place, Andrea, and I think it was awesome. We're 40 minutes in, and I'm glad to hear we've got some obviously newcomers as well on this. I hope you're enjoying the content so far. Everyone's really speaking from the heart uh, when we talk about who I said so love to heart, to love myself. And I'm truly grateful. That, that that's you know we're in a great place so rash take it away bro no no, no i was gonna say there's a comment here that i seen earlier that i don't want to move away from joe and i think i'm gonna just put it on the screen and maybe you girls guys the pom man uh have a look at this and i think it was a little bit early into the conversation mm -hmm. but let's 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 give that sort of sort of as much as we can help on this uh you know podcast that we can help people that are watching um, I think that, that's the whole was, purpose. I, I think that comment was for me when I was talking about the empty cup, right? From um, yeah, from Joseph, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if I, I'm just going to answer that very quickly. What we mean was, if we're focusing on ourselves, right? I mean, that's the whole point. That's what we're trying to, as they say, set up so we can encourage people to spend more time with themselves. There's a difference between being lonely and being alone. There's a huge difference. Okay, being lonely is obviously where you're you're bored. Okay, you're looking for the next best thing outside of yourself. Being alone is really cherishing and embracing your your beingness right here, and it's a beautiful thing. So when we say put enough water in your cup or enough love in your cup, it's basic. That's what we're referring to. Now, of course, I could fake a smile, but at the end of the day, I mean, the day will go, you know, pass along and and. I'll, I'll put, put on my best behavior, my best mask. But at the end of the day, when I put my head on the pillow, go to sleep, I feel I feel cheated. I feel like I didn't really show up for myself. I wasn't genuine. It's almost like shaking someone's hand. And have you ever had the dead hand um, shake? Mm -hmm. It's a dead hand. It's like, I hate it. yeah, and it, and it feels horrible. Like the person that's actually doing it and the person who's receiving it, there's nothing there. There's no life. And that's what we're referring to, Joseph. I hope that that clarification came through because I could show up sincerely and genuinely, fully, or I could just put on a show. And that's not going to really help anyone. It's not going to add real value, if you if you ask me. And that's exactly what I meant by that having enough love, enough acceptance within yourself to be able to and allow you to share with others. That's really what I was referring to. So I hope that point came. came and same can I ask? Oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead. Go, go, go ahead. Andrew. Like just being conscious, I guess, and mindful of where we're filling that cup from. Because I think subconsciously we can fall into the trap, and I'm speaking for myself here, that we pour love into others because secretly we're hoping we're enough that they will pour it back into us. Now, the difference of the relationships and how close we can connect with people when we are okay with who we are, just okay, just comfortable in our own skin. This is not about I'm the best at this and I'm the best at that. That is where arrogance and stuff comes from, as in the energy that it comes from, that the world must know that I'm better than X, Y, Z. But just that level playing field of I'm not perfect, I'm not broken, I just am. I just am and I have all of this great stuff to give 
opposed to if I give this to you, am I going to be worthy enough for you to love me back? And if you don't, then I must not be worthy, opposed to I'm worthy. Like this this saying uh, came to me a couple of years ago, but I love me enough that I'm okay if you don't. Mm -hmm. That we can just allow the world to experience us however they need to and that Mm -hmm. does not shake our foundation. Yeah. I have a question. Uh, Well, just while we've got Pom in the the room. Pom, when did you make the turnaround? Because obviously I've known we're friends and stuff like that, but like when was the shift for you? Because obviously the background for those don't know, you've gone through some pretty hard times prior. When was the shift to go? And and you could be also misunderstood because you go out there and those who watch Pom in Oz and you can tell them, tell them about what you do. You do a statistic show about the blues and et cetera. And then some people might not get you, right? But but there's a lot of love that you give yourself and you give out love also. So I'm just interested to, you know, maybe you can share from your experience um, the Dan's change or the shift. Well, Dan I mean, always- I, I relate to Moritz um, massively. So, I mean, I, I was adopted. Um, me and my brothers, we were sexually abused and we were taken into an institutionalised care. So long story short, in the UK around the 80s, they believed that, Um, keeping families together could be a bad thing. So when there was a big age difference between the brothers, you all got put into different foster homes. Um, I was fortunate enough that my my grandfather um, basically bankrupt himself to fight to have us in his house because over 60s weren't allowed to adopt at the time. So I was very fortunate. And then when I was 16, I didn't deal with that stuff. I kind of lived in an alternate universe. I became addicted to heroin. So I was about 22, 23, that I kind of realized that my entire life I was searching to replicate my mother and father's love. So I I, I became drawn to heroin because heroin's gr- great. It was the first thing I had in my life that was always there without any expectation. So it was a fantastic thing and I've never been able to replace it never been able to replace that drug, that it was there unconditionally. All I had to do was buy it and it was there. It would listen to me. It would laugh with me. It would dance with me. So once I got clean, I spent about two years trying to search for it. And then one day I realized an epiphany if, and I'll use my wife as an example. My wife is my biggest rock now, God bless her. But if I have an affair on her, she's probably not going to be there for me. My kids probably aren't going to be there for me. My friends probably aren't going to be there for me. If I make a mistake, the one person I need in my life to be there for me is me, is me. And that's with all my faults, with all my benefits, I have to realize that the only person who is going to be there for me unconditionally is me. When the chips are down, I'm there. When the chips are high, I'm there. And I might be lucky that people share it with me. But when I fuck up, few people want to share that with me. So when we were talking about faking it and you said you can't fake it if you want validation for your dad, that's a different problem. You're seeking validation from your dad. And I can tell you, Moritz, from my heart, my real dad, he's never going to validate me. So I just have to deal with that and realize that who cares? I, I, and I would say to Moritz, you've got here so far in your life without it. Why do you need it, bro? Why do you need it? Because every day you've got up and God's graced you with the sky without that. So you probably don't need it. You think you need it. You need to learn to give yourself that validation that he's not man enough to give you. And that's really the truth. People don't validate other people I found in life because they're not man enough or woman enough or good human enough to give someone the validation. It's a lot easier in your life to say to someone, you're a dickhead, than it is to say, you know what? You're better than me. You know, when your wife split up with you, you bounce back. I want to be like that. I want to be like that. Power to you. It's harder to say that. It's a lot easier to say, oh, he moved on quick, didn't he, with his wife? Got a new girlfriend. But genuinely, if you break that down, you're envious that you look at your relationship. If it broke down, you knew you'd be a quivering wreck for six, 12, three years, whatever it is. So where I come from, and I think it's simple, and it might sound so easy. People used to say this to me in rehab. Just be better. Oh, that's easy, mate. Yeah, good good for you to say it. But it is simply easy. It is so incredibly easy that it's actually makes you upset you wasted your life thinking another way. And that is just be happy that who you are. 
I, I, I'm Dan Williams. I have some horrible things. Sometimes I think I'm right when I'm wrong. And sometimes I don't have the balls to look my wife in the eye when we've had an argument and go, you know what? We're 20 minutes in. You were right, babe. You were right. I am totally wrong about this. I have to keep the argument going because I have to save face. That's one of my character traits. I can't, I can't fix it. It just keeps happening. But you can appreciate your negatives, but then find a positive. It can be something. So for me, Moritz, you're positive. You're however old you are without your dad's proper love because I've got kids and I validate my kids every day. I feel like that's my duty to validate their existence. So I'm sorry that hasn't happened, but you're here, mate. That's amazing because some people aren't here. So all that, there's your positive. It can be the smallest positive in the world. And mine started with I injected heroin a few times and I'm still here. That, the statistics say I, I can't be, but I'm here. And then it went further back. I got sexually abused. I'm still here. Still here. Do you know what I mean? I don't hate. That's a positive. Can I just, Dad, can I just jump in, though? Of That's, course you can. Yeah, I was just going to say, what we have to all realise is all of these hang-ups, because we all have them, all these negatives are our positives. Because they are the ones, you know, you've had to stop in your tracks and re-look at the entire picture. And in doing that, you've claimed yourself. So even with our parents, you're right. I mean, no parent is going to be perfect for any child. But in that process, you get to see, oh, my gosh, here I am. I'm looking at something that isn't quite right. What do I feel? Where do I stand? So those difficulties, well, however heavy they might be in life, are the successes. They are the positives. So it's. I know it sounds ridiculous, but... If we all give ourselves enough time and space, you will realise that all the hang-ups that we've actually been thrown to in our lives are being our give us biggest gifts. So it's really important. And then, and as you as you do that, the more and more you realise that, the more and more you realise that I am the centre of my world, which is exactly what Dan said. There is no one else that's going to support me other than me. So I've got to find a way of realising that I have to claim my own power back from all of this negativity. So I just want to hang, but that's... Add. <laughs> that's fine. I think it's as basic as, like Rash said, I do YouTube, so I get abuse. Some people get send some stupid shit. And a lot of my YouTube friends read it, and they're like, how do you cope with that, Pom? And I'm like, simple. My wife's pretty. She loves me. My kids are amazing. They love me. That's my life. I made that. And these people probably don't have that to have the time to find to send me this abuse. So already I am superior to these people in my life right. because I simply read their message and don't respond. So I have now ascended that I'm looking down upon high and they know by me not validating it, I'm superior because every little thing you do in your life, if you're seeking validation, needs the validation of someone else and I don't. So I, I find it as kind of a, a great exercise. I love abuse in my inbox because mm -hmm. it just says that I'm a superior human being. But that's that goes back to what we were saying about the power game. When you know what the dynamic is, you're not going to enter that game. And you say, you can play that game. Fine, go off you go. But I'm not entering that one. I'm not giving you my power at all. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. And off we go. <laughs> exactly right. Guys, uh, we're going to have to wrap up really soon because we're almost heading towards the hour. Dan, love your stuff, man. Please join yeah. us anytime. Great value plus your can't support her. We'll put it Dan. out there. So, Dan, <laughs> Dan, you're amazing. Amazing story, man. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. That's fantastic, man. You, you yeah. really got me going, man. Jealous, bro. That's hey, beautiful. I just want to uh, just shift gears, and there's been tons of comments here, which is great. And today's episode has been amazing. And thanks a lot. for everyone that's watching. What do we want to discuss for next week? And let's put it in the comments. I uh, just wanted to put it out there. If, if there's a topic you, you guys think that we should discuss for next week, put it out there because it, it is a show for the people and it's, it's a show that we're just trying to, by the people you know, by having for, these conversations. Sorry? By the people for the people. Exactly. So, <laughs> give, us and, your and, and, give us your comments. What do you think we should talk about next week? Um, we're having a Maybe ball. Dan's got a suggestion too, and uh, he can maybe join us if he's free. He's a, he's a busy boy, but um, it, it is the off season of footy at the moment, Pom Man. So, um, you know, more than welcome to join us. 
I, um, I would be so, incredibly humbled to join these four great minds that I see before me. Because, I mean, it's like like Andrea said, humans are different and it's fantastic. Mm. So what I say to you may not fix it. But I would say a topic I'd like to see is we've said why you can't love yourself. How do you do it? What are the steps? Because I guarantee five people here start the morning five different ways, but we probably all have the same end product. We're fairly happy. Do you know what I mean? We're fairly happy. So I'd love to see that 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 stage. What do you do? How do you validate it? How do you validate your existence? Because I think that's the validation. Why do we exist? It's the question that drives science mad, religion mad. And that is on a micro scale what a human is. Why am I here? What's the purpose of it? Oh, I'll okay. tell you what, that's a, that's a good one. You might go deep though, Sam and Rash. You're going to be right with that. <laughs> I love it. Uh, exactly. This is what I put in uh, uh, in the comments. So what what do you do to validate your existence? But I'll fix up the ground. Up. Guys, everyone uh -huh. in the audience, give us a thumbs up. Just show us in the comments. <laughs> you give us a thumbs up about that, okay? About that. Uh, what do you do to validate your existence? Lana's comment is also great too, guys. What is it? Yeah. How, do She's got, How do you find the strength to stand up for yourself? Oh, I love that too. Yeah, that's that also be, really important. Those are good ones. Which is very similar, actually. Very it's actually similar. very similar. <laughs> it's a little bit similar. It's cool mm. as well. so isn't it interesting a... that it came through with both? Isn't it amazing how two different minds from totally different parts of the world said, think the same thing? Isn't that, I think that's quite important. <laughs> yeah, that There's another cool. one here from Maritz. It says existence and conscious. Uh, oh, conscious. whoa. How much down the rabbit hole would you like to go? <laughs> Moritz. Um, <laughs> that's fun. Boy, Bella. Whoa, whoa. Well, we've, we've gone to the heart. We don't know about anything else. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. Um, strength, please. Oh, Meg's yeah. saying so, she prefers strength, the strength one. I think she's saying Lana's one. I think that's right. Yeah, I think we'll go with that, right? That's which one, one we're going to go with? Well, uh, we'll go. Pom, what do you think? Well, I think existence and conscience, just my belief, is the same as your heart. So from a science point of view, this controls this. This beats because this is telling it to beat. Once that tells you to stop beating, you die. That is the science behind it. Your heart isn't a separate entity. It's controlled by the brain. So I think people get lost with that. They think, oh, the heart's something mythical. But the heart follows this. You get this right, this will always follow you into battle. So I think it's the same thing. So I, I'd love going down the rabbit hole. The boys evidently don't. I, I love asking the question, why? That is the yeah. question my wife gets annoyed about in this house. Why, why, why? It comes from me. It comes from the kids. But when you stop asking why, is, you're fucked. The only, th the only thing <laughs> is that it's important, it's important to give people constructive opportunities to actually work with, with their situation. And I think existential discussions, I love. That's my, you know, my pet love. But I think if people... If people can, if we can offer people an opportunity to discuss about the ingredients that give them direction, that's also really important too. I don't know what you think, guys. Yeah, I mean that's what we that's what we try to do. I mean we do know that everyone's coming from a different angle. I mean the episode is down to like less than an hour, so we try to actually throw in a few goodies wherever we can, ho hoping that people would you know try it out for size and, and see how they go, which is really cool. Um, and so, yeah, so we're nearing the hour. Uh, we're so gonna what, go what, what did we decide on? Right? So we decided on um, where do we find, how do we validate or find strength, right? No, what's the, what's the actual topic? Because I'm going to actually put it in for next week. What do we call it? So how do we validate? No, I think the strength one from Lana was more clearer, don't you think? Uh, how do you find yeah, the strength to stand up for yourself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's well, a good what one. do you I mean um Okay. Well, what do you cool. do to, to to validate your existence? That's yeah. big time. <laughs> yeah, that and Meg will cover everything. Yeah, and Meg Actually, also either will be fine. Sorry guys, I'm just trying to make it make it more simple that make it bring it down to What do you yeah. think, Andrea? You've been very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> There's five of us. Someone has to be. <laughs> I've had I, I did a fair bit of talking in there. Um, I'm I'm probably on a completely different path because I'd love, love to talk about the difference between the heart, the mind and the soul because 
I'm a little bit different to what Pom said in terms of the heart follows the mind. So I'm on a completely different path. I'll just show up and I'll just be guided by whatever everyone else is is happy to chat about. But Pom, I might end up private messaging you so we can have a little I'm always open to being Oh, can't we listen DMs. too? That'll be fun. <laughs> We'll just get Pom on next right week. We're going to go right into the rabbit holes, but anyway. Uh, we'll get no, Pom I'm in next week and that's it. it. Yeah, and by the way, Pom, Pom's been dropping the F-bomb a little bit. You know, we, we don't oh, use the door, but it's okay. <laughs> it's cool. Oh, Moritz, he's up, mate. I'm like. <laughs> What's he saying? Oh, he's just being positive. He's going to get a room. Oh, he's being like, positive. He's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> well, good one, guys. That's really awesome, Pom. Thanks for joining us. Okay, we're going to see you hopefully next week, okay? And as well, uh, thank you so much for joining. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up right now. It was an absolute pleasure to have you guys. Um, and we've got our topic for next week, so please join us. It's going to be good fun. We're going to be episode number 14. Can you believe it? Episode 14. That's amazing. We're really enjoying this. It's getting better and better. And that was really good. Thanks so much for your, your additions. Um, it's Thank really you great that you're me. joining. I uh, appreciate that. And we'll hopefully see you next week, right? Yep. Love right to. On. Cool. And we're going to be going. We're going to be jumping off. We're going to end the broadcast. We appreciate all your time. Please join us when we talk about human investment te technology. We call it the hit show. Uh, join us at the coffee shop. <laughs> talk about <laughs> the hit. When we talk about self-development. And next week is going to be a hot topic talk about where do we find your strength. Uh, that's going to be action-packed. We're going to go really deep on that, actually. Probably even throw in a little bit of, you know, hypnosis maybe and a bit of that meditation, a bit of the breathing, what we can do to actually get grounded and enjoy that process. So enjoy your week. Take care. We hope we answered a lot of the stuff that's on your mind. Uh, I personally found it very exciting. Andrea, that was amazing. I mean, that was so heartfelt. You really dropped some real interesting, you know, uh, knowledge bonds, man. And so any final words from you, Andrea? Go well, people. And even if you don't believe it now, you are magnificent. Love it. Love it, Rash. Over to you, mate. Oh, uh, to me, go well, go blues. So <laughs> <laughs> that's it. Go oh, Carlton. Oh, yeah. Go Carlton. Yeah, I love the way you say it, man. Really. We're all we're all now Carlton supporters, just for those in the group. Sorry if you're Collingwood or anything else. But it's still it's, it's, it's well, we still love yeah. you though, right? Well, yeah. it depends on which team you go for. If you're Collingwood or Essendon, then maybe not. But we'll we'll accept you, but not we'll love. Accept. You'll always love, be love. Yeah. yeah. Right on, guys. Now, adios from me. Be well. Hey, Take guys. care. We're out.